Okay, so uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a uh, polar plot in Python, so based off a of function in R and theta. And um, for example, uh, polar plots, if you want to plot atomic orbitals or wave functions in, in three dimensions, but using polar dimensions instead of uh, um, x, y, and z Cartesian coordinates. Okay, so the first thing we do, as always, is we want to import our libraries. For this, we want to import uh, NumPy. And we're also going to import, uh, we want to plot this function. So we have to import matplotlib um, pyplot. Okay, so we're going to import this as plt. And then we want to define our function. Okay, and so what we're going to do is we're going to say there's some function uh, in theta and some function in r, and then we'll just combine them to make a, a composite function. So we have one function in theta. So we'll say t is a function of theta and some parameters a and b. And so this is going to be, we'll just have it return. Let's just say it's some sinusoidal varying function, OK? So we can do np sine. And let's say it's theta times b. And this whole thing is a times theta times sine theta b, OK? So here's our fu a simple function in theta. Um, Generally, the default for this is going to be in radians, OK? So uh, I'm not going to worry about units here because it's kind of arbitrary. Um, but let's also define a function in R. So we'll uh, define R. And this is going to be in terms of uh, R. And then we'll say C and D are the parameters. And so this we will return, let's say, C times um, cosine. So we'll make it a, a cosine function, np cosine. And this is going to be uh, r times d. Okay, so we have some sine and cosine function for r and theta. And now we want to make a list. Okay, so to, to generate a polar plot, we need to make a, a grid. So it's an r and theta, so it's going to be a 2D plot, um, kind of like a contour plot or a heat map. And we want to make a grid. And so this is kind of the specifics on how to make the grid in Python. We want to make a list of r values to plot this at. Okay. So to do this, we're going to say uh, some NumPy, some range of values. And we'll say from 0 to 4.01 and steps of 0.01, OK? So to include 4, we need to have it go to 4 plus the delta, delta R. So 4.01 will give you a list. I mean, we can, we can evaluate this here. Look, the R list now is an array. And it goes from 0 to Four, okay, so it doesn't include the last point on, on a range. You can use lens space if you want to make it include the last point. So um, now let's make a list for the theta values. Okay, so the theta list is going to be um, let's make a range going from zero to 361 degrees in steps of one. So this will go from zero to 360, but we want this in radians. Okay, so in pi uh, radians. And we, uh, so basically this is going to be, we can say this is in angstroms, for example. And this is going to be in uh, radians. And uh, now we need to generate a mesh, okay? So to evaluate a contour plot at um, the appropriate values, we need to have it go for every R and theta combination. Okay, so let's call it the R mesh. And theta mesh. We want these two things defined. It's going to equal np, and we'll call it mesh grid. So this numpy mesh grid is the function we're, we're going to use to generate the mesh. And it's going to be mesh composed of r list and theta list. Okay, so this is a pretty easy way to generate the mesh to pass these values to the function to evaluate at the appropriate space. So we get like a 2D data set back. So um, here we go. Oh, has no, uh, what did I spell this wrong? Radians. This should be NumPy radians with an S, OK? And here's our list. We have our R list, which is a list of R values. And then this is converted to an R mesh, OK? So basically, this is the 2D points that we're going to evaluate for R. So it just repeats this, basically, for all the theta values. And here's our uh, theta list is a is a 1D data set of theta going from 0 to you know 2 pi in, in radians. 
and a theta mesh um, is going to look like this. Okay, so here's the R mesh and theta mesh. So we can pass these mesh values to get the um, correct um, 2D data set for our polar plot or for any contour plot. And so now let's um, define our constants A, B, C, and D. Okay, so we'll say A equals 1.5. B equals 2, C equals 2, and D equals 1.6, okay? So now let's say that you have some function uh, that's a function of R and theta. It's going to equal the theta function in, in uh, terms of the, uh, evaluated at the theta mesh points for A and B as the parameters times the R functions evaluated at the R mesh points, and this is for C and D as the parameters. Okay, so this would be, for example, a wave function. So if you want to plot an atomic orbital, um, a wave function could be composed of a theta element, like a spherical harmonic, and um, a distance, an, an R variable. Okay, now you can also do, um, we'll call this a uh, full function 2. And for example, if this is a wave function, if you want to get a probability density, you would want to square this. Okay, so it would say full function squared. How you do squared is you just do this double, um, I don't really know what this mark is called, this, this, this multiplication sign. I mean, you, you do it twice. You don't do the caret, okay? You do this twice, and that means squared. Of course, in polar coordinates, if we if this was, I mean, this is arbitrary, but if this was a, um, a wave function and we wanted a probability density, we also need to multiply by r squared. Okay, this is just a unit conversion. It depends on your function, but for example, we can define different functions. Okay, so now we make our plot, and so for the plot, we're going to say we're going to define a new figure and uh, axis data. Okay, for example, the, the polar plot axis data, and here's where we can call plot. Let's call slug sub plots. Okay, so we're going to say the DPI is 120. I like to do this high resolution, and the sub plot is going to be, let's say KW, it's going to be from the subplot dictionary. Um, and to get a polar plot, we need to say projection equals polar. Okay, so this is the notation you use to pull the polar um, subplot, the polar axes out uh, for this plot. Okay, and uh, now we can define we've, this axis data as AX. Uh, so let's call a contour plot, C O U N T. Wait, C O N contour, contour F is the the plot we're going to use. Okay, and um, basically what this does is it's a contour plot which you could just normally call, but by doing this ahead of time we've defined this contour plot um, as being in polar coordinates. Okay, so these axes are defined in polar coordinates. Okay, so now we pass it, pass it the theta values. So this is the theta mesh. Um, and R mesh values, okay, so these are the X data and Y data that we're going to plot the um, on the grid, but um, the function values are evaluated at these theta and R values, okay, so the function, the evaluated points are full function, okay, so this is the, the, the Z values, uh, for, for instance, evaluated at this R and theta. And um, so 100, and this is the uh, number of contours uh, that you'd want. And then um, we can do this, for example, and let's, let's see what this looks like. So if you plot this, now we get a contour plot, okay? Um, oh, so I'm, I'm sorry, we need to put a dictionary. So there's a T dictionary uh, missing here. Okay, and look, we're going to generate a polar plot. Here's what it looks like. Um, so this is plotted in terms of degrees. So we go from uh, 0 to, to 360. And we um, have the R values denoted as distances away. You can add labels and whatnot. You can go into the details for this. And you can also um, go into contour plots and add a scale bar for what the, the values are. Um, you can also change the color map, okay? So for example, C map, um, I like to do one called plasma. So uh, here it's going to plot for, you know, a plasma color map. 
And we can also do this for, so let's copy the whole thing and, and say we wanted to plot the probability density, for example, as full function 2. So we'll do the same thing um, for full function 2. And let's evaluate this. And uh, they should both pop up here. So here's our function. Oh, I, I, I deleted the plots too early. So here's our function, and here's our square of that function. Um, and so you can get an idea of basically how to how to manipulate these things. Okay, so you can look up contour f on uh, Google Matplotlib and get all the details on on how to refine this plot a little more. Most important thing here is how to set up the mesh um, to evaluate a contour plot and polar coordinates. Okay, so uh, I hope you enjoyed the video.